Okay, so now we're going to talk about base design, and um, I want to talk about what went into getting this base to sound the way it does, and my approach to this sort of bass, because obviously in this style of music, the bass is really important, um, and nailing that sound is crucial to capturing the essence of uh, what this sort of filtered style of house is. So um, I'm just going to unmute this again so we can hear the bass with the kick real quick. So as you can hear, it's a very filtered, kind of low endy, very fat, subby bass. And, um, you know, it's actually quite a bit going into designing this to make it sound the way that it does. Um, my initial approach for this was basically I kind of wanted to mimic the sound of a real bass player. So uh, the sound of the fingering on the strings was really crucial to kind of capturing that essence of a real bass, as well as... Um, you know, for the sake of this style, filtering out a lot of the high end so that you get that really low, fat sounding bass. Lots of sidechain compression to really duck it and give it that pumping feeling. Um, and a good amount of saturation and limiting uh, as well. And of course, it all begins with the source sound, which is Serum. So let's open this up here and let's just start to uh, reverse engineer this patch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable everything here. So that everything is disengaged. So here's what the actual bass sounds like with none of the extra plugins on it. No filter. So it's actually really unremarkable by itself. And as you can hear, there's no effects. Very, very simple. Um, my, I, I always try and have a very kind of purist approach to like getting the best synth sounds because I think having the best um, origin of a sound just sets you up for a lot of success later on. Um, there's a, a trick that uh, I want to show you that really kind of gives this its character. So if, as you know, if you are familiar with Serum, when you open it up, basically it starts with just oscillator A. And um, what I want to point out is this, uh, the noise. Noise isn't actually doing anything. Um, oscillator A is being unisoned. So it's 16 voices set to a uh, fairly conservative detune setting of 0.11. The blend is pretty much uh, left at stock. And um, when I'm doing bass sounds, basically, I want to make sure that I'm going to get a synth sound that sounds really strong in the mono section. So when I say that mono section is basically if I mono this bass sound, um, I want it to sound like it's 100% there. If I mono it and suddenly some of the bass volume just goes away, what that means is I've got some of the bass in, uh, situated in, say, the stereo or the side channels. And... Um, what happens is, is, as I said before, you know, we want this to be very mono compatible. If it gets played on a system that's a mono system, meaning it takes the sound and collapses it to a mono signal, and we lose some information, that's bad because what happens is, is we don't get full translation of our of our, our work, and some of that gets lost, and so people don't hear the the full result. They don't hear exactly how you want the the how you intended the music to be heard. So we try and eliminate that problem by, you know, in advance, we, we try and make sure it sounds good on a system where, um, you know, it may be played back in mono. So what I do is on all my projects is I have on my master bus at the very end, I have a utility here. And what this is doing is I've set it so that it triggers when I hit my M key on my keyboard, as you can see, it engages. And what it's doing is it's just collapsing the entire signal down to mono. So the width setting is at 0%. And if I hit M again, it disengages. So it's a really quick, handy way to check my entire mix in mono. So going back here to the bass patch, um, I always try to make sure that my starter patch uh, will sound good in mono. So if I play this in mono, you'll hear what I mean. So I've just engaged and disengaged mono mode there. So you can make sure that it's uh, it's fully there. Um, now, uh, another 
cool trick is when you're in Serum, um, this random mode is set to 100%. And what this is is randomizing the phase, the starting position of the waveform as it's described there. And that's exactly that. This, this waveform, if I play it on the keyboard here, it's going to be too random for a bass sound. And what happens is, is you lose some of that cohesiveness, some of that fullness in the bass. Because it's so random, um, it almost blurs your your uh, your bass to the point of not having a solid sound. And I can demonstrate this uh, just by increasing it to 100%. You see what happens where, as I'm adjusting the randomness, the phase starts to be a little more centered. And what that does is it gives you a much, much stronger, punchier initial sound to your bass. I'll show you that one more time. It's kind of cool, it's very detuned, but it's very washy and a bit muddy and kind of lacks definition. And as I start to reduce the randomness, you'll hear it starts to solidify a bit at the beginning. And I get a much stronger sound. Um, apart from that, I can adjust the phase start position on, on the waveform. So um, on, because this is so many voices being played, it won't have as huge of an effect, but uh, on certain patches this can also change your sound as well, so um, I'll definitely be playing around with this. It doesn't really have much of an effect on this, only because there's so many voices being played. Um, so those are two characteristics that really help give this starting sound its, its identity. Um, now, as you could see, I had oscillator B engaged. However, the volume's all the way down, as they call it, level. Now, what it's actually doing is I'm using ring mod, which is a cool modulation. And what that does is it basically it t applies the frequency of oscillator B against the, the frequency of oscillator A. And ring mod is a cool way to take one frequency and multiply it against this other frequency here. And what this does is it gives you a characteristic ringing sound, hence why it's called ring mod. So if I increase it, you'll hear it's much more dramatic. There's that ringing sound, and it's basically like a metallic tone that it can impart to certain sounds. Um, obviously, for the sake of this, it's very over overdone, and I'm not going to use it like that. But what it can do is it can give you cool harmonics and add some character to your to your sound in a way that will make it not sound like it's some uh, you know a very general vanilla sounding preset. It gives it a little more unique characteristics and a little more personality, um, which is what I like, so that it sounds more interesting. It's very subtle, actually. It's just a little, little, it's a little bit of metallic overtone. Um, when I engage the saturation and compression with, or sorry, limiting, um, you can hear it a bit more, um, and it just gives a little more character to the sound. Um, what else we have? We have a filter being engaged, which is basically the awesome sounding built-in filter in Serum. Um, but some things to make this a little more interesting, I'm using the 24 dB Moog modeled filter. And I have fatness cranked all the way up to 100%. And uh, this definitely gives it a little more fullness. As you can hear, it gives it a bit more body. Um, I have a little bit of resonance not too, too much, because again, I just don't want to overwhelm the uh, the, the fullness of this bass. Um, and I've got the drive engaged to about 30%. And what this is doing is it's just driving the input fil the input gain from this straight into the filter. Gives a little more fullness again, a little more fatness. Um, and that's basically it. That's really all there is going on. Um, another, two, another quick note, um, if you are using... Um, Serum, and you've got a lot of voices going on, for the sake of conserving your CPU, um, I'm on a pretty beastly setup here, but even if you're on a, say, a laptop or a slower CPU, a great way to maintain uh, stability, meaning you're not going to max out your CPU as quickly, is to go over to the oscillator settings here in the global menu, and just click 1x. Basically, what this is doing is disables the oversampling. Uh, normally, this is set to 2. And if I set this to one, basically it's not oversampling. Um, and to be honest, it's 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 not that noticeable on a lot of material. On certain patches, you will hear there's a different, there's definitely a difference uh, switching between the different oversampling settings. But uh, it should be noted that if you're using high voicing in unison, um, 
I always go to One X because it's more efficient for your CPU. Um, but to be honest, be, you, there's so many voices being played, you won't hear that much of a difference. I rarely will hear a difference if I use 2X or 4X so oversampling uh, compared to the one uh, times, which is basically not being oversampled at all. So uh, great way to conserve some CPU. Um, and uh, it's just a way to be a little more efficient with your project. So there you go.